Hello and welcome to the second development diary for Whitespace, the procedural bounty hunting game set on the surface of randomly generated planets. I'm Jonathan Biddle, the director of One Bit Beyond, formerly of Curve Digital. Let's just jump straight in and see what it is that's changed since the last diary. Something I'm always keen on is control schemes that are a little bit more nuanced and deep. What I didn't want for this game was it to feel like you're just flying a camera around a landscape, so there's a few things that I've been putting in to make it feel more interesting. This is the side boost that you can see, it allows you to dodge out of the way of terrain and also enemy fire. You can also tweak your height quite accurately here, which is something that's pretty important for the radar profile system, which I'll go into later. I love games like Outrun, Ridge Racer, Mario Kart, where you, uh, you hold down the brake and you do this wonderful slide around the corner. Good. I wonder what it feels like when you do it with a spaceship, and uh, turns out it feels pretty good. You can kind of pull down behind someone and chase back after them. An extension to this system that I've been playing with is the turret mode, which allows you to turn away from the direction your ship is headed. That way you're free to aim at anything you like while your ship continues flying. Typically a lot of these cockpit based games, they, they suffer from having to turn around a lot. Enemies are behind you and you have to try and get them in your sights, so it becomes a bit boring. So I've tried to mix it up so the pace is kept quite high. And when you combine it with the side boost and the height change, you've got some really interesting maneuvers at your fingertips. One of the main additions to the game is the, the new radar profile, which if you look at the bottom right you can see the eye that's closed. The higher you go, the higher above the ground you are, the more visible you are. And if you look forward you see on the radar this enemy is about to start scanning. So if I drop down, drop down below his his radar, he can't see me, but if I go up high again, he'll start to scan me. And if you spend too long being scanned, then he'll spot you like this. Any enemy that you destroy drops its loot, which you can hover up with your tractor beam. But it's not just loot that you can use the tractor beam with. If you destroy civilians or some of the other ships, they drop this distress beacon, which is intended to call over the enemy ships to their aid. If you look down at the map, then all of the, uh, the Hawk ships that are flying towards my location. This thing I've got the tractor beam, I fire it off. It's been projected over there, now they're all heading over there. That allows me to take the opportunity to come in, take them by surprise, take them all out and then go. A lot of what I've been working on over the past few months has been in service of the combat. I've really focused on what the game feels like to play at a low level, made sure it's kind of sticky and really worked on the control system. I've always been really fascinated with this part of games design, the, the moment to moment, the bit where your fingers hit the controller, and although it only feels like part of what I want to do with the game, it's something that I think is crucial, it's really part of the backbone of the game, so if the combat isn't fun then the rest of the game won't be either, so it's, it's kind of critical to get it right. When it came to weapon design, I took a long look at Bungie's systems for Halo and Destiny. As an example, if you see this projectile weapon here, the bullets take a while to hit their target. So it's good against ground targets, but not something agile. However, this uh, Halo-like minigun damages enemies instantly. All you do is place the cursor over and squeeze the trigger. The idea is to create a system where you have to use the right weapon for the right job. White Space is built on a number of procedural systems, but these are being used in service of the gameplay you've seen in the video so far. The aim isn't to create an endless, endless universe with diverse planets to explore, but uh, it's rather to have an endless variety of playgrounds in which to explore the game's mechanics and arcade action. The game will have roguelike elements, so it's much closer to Spelunky or Binding of Isaac than it is to games like Elite or No Man's Sky. Think of it as Nuclear Throne from a cockpit, or a procedural halo crossed with Star Glider. Going forward, the aim is still to add more Deus Ex-like systems to the game, so that the player can influence their environment in interesting ways. There's also an in-depth hacking mechanic, which this zoom is the start of, and I'm intending that to be one of the game's defining concepts. 